so the first thing we're going to do is, is talk about the audio ecosystem, and I'm going to invite up uh, Sheila Spence, the VP of Corporate Development at uh, Spotify. Well, um, uh, let's see, where do we want to start here? Um, maybe just to, to get things going, uh, so you're the VP of Corporate Development at, at Spotify. You've been there for six years, which uh, was a shock to me, actually, when I saw that. Uh, long career at, at WPP, too. So maybe just talk through what is your role at, at Spotify, uh, what are you focused on, and, um, and we'll go from there. Sure. Uh, six years, my gosh. It's <laughs> been quite a six years. Uh, when I joined Spotify, it was uh, a fraction of the size of the company it is today on any metric. Employees, revenue, users, you name it. Um, and when I joined, uh, the mandate was really to build a team that could identify strategic acquisitions for Spotify to bring us into new businesses. And that is, is really what we've done. I have, uh, I have a small but mighty team. I think John Falkenberg from my team is here today. Okay. And, uh, we're, we really are sort of two-sided. We work really closely with our business leaders, our internal stakeholders, to understand where their strategies are going, what opportunities are relevant for them, and how they can create real meaningful value at Spotify. And then, of course, we're looking externally, meeting tons of companies, understanding where uh, investment dollars are going, who's leading innovation, and what companies could be a fit with those strategies that we're driving internally. Well, you guys have certainly been very active on the M&A front. Before we get there, though, I think, you know, a big lead up to that activity was the shift that you guys took about four years ago at, at Spotify. So we all know Spotify is the, the incredible music app that it is. But four years ago, you guys made this shift to be an audio first company. Can you talk a little bit about what led to that strategy and, and how it's been going? So audio first was a recognition that we had so much uh, engagement on our platform and we were beginning to see people engage in content that wasn't music even when we didn't promote it and we saw these little breadcrumbs on our platform that told us there was an opportunity to really um, export all of the success we'd had in music to other audio formats and that was the beginning of audio first now M&A has been a huge driver of audio first um, certainly, it, um, acquisitions got us into podcasts, but then we also used acquisitions to really elevate platform excellence as well. Um, and uh, certainly more recently, uh, in the theme of audio first, we made our first acquisition to get into audiobooks. Yeah, I, you know, I was looking at the list here, so just to read this off. In podcast deck, in, since 2019, you guys did Anchor, Megaphone, Huska, Betty Labs, Chartable, Pods, Pod Sites, Content, The Ringer, Gimlet, Audio books, find a way, and, and other uh, deals like Synantic, Kinzen. I think I'm even missing some. So you guys have obviously been uh, in incredibly active. As you, it's 18, so you. It's 18. Okay, that. I'm definitely missing a few. <laughs> and there's content deals uh, in there as well, not just M and A. Um, you know, in your in your position, obviously, you as you said, you're focused internally. You're focused focused externally. You could look to build. You could partner. You could buy. How do you guys go about thinking through that those strategy decisions? Probably three lenses. Uh, the first is speed to market. How important is it to get to market faster? There may be offensive reasons or defensive reasons, but fundamentally what you're doing is pulling forward and de-risking whatever that plan is that you have ahead. Um, I think for us, uh, Find A Way, our audiobooks acquisition was a classic example of this because we could have gone and built the data pipes to bring audiobook content onto Spotify platform. We could have gone and set up a team to go out and sign up licenses with hundreds of publishers across the world to bring their audiobooks onto Spotify. But Find a, find a Way had done this, so they saved us all this time. And instead, we acquired the company, and in four months, we had the full catalog of audiobooks available on Spotify. That's what I mean by speed to market. Second of all, I would say innovation and unique assets. Um, you know, we've always been at the forefront of innovation, and um, we want to continue to be so. We'd love to build brilliant products ourselves, but sometimes it makes sense to acquire someone else's product and uh, build it into our own so we can bring the best experience to our users. 
Um, we did acquire Synantic uh, last year, and I think they are prime, uh, prime case for best case innovation. They are a leader in voice synthesis, and we knew voice synthesis was gonna be an important differentiator for Spotify long term. So we could have partnered with a company, um, but we would not have the benefit of having them in-house so we can experiment and iterate and scale up easily. We didn't want to be dependent on a vendor for something as critical to our identity and differentiation, so we acquired the company. Kind of makes sense. Uh, look, in podcasting, you guys have obviously been, is one of the areas that's been the most active uh, in these deals across content, measurement, and monetization strategies. You know, in, in the broader open web, these are often things that are separated, right? There's content companies, then you've got monetization companies in the middle, measurement companies on the other end. You guys have brought these all together uh, around your podcast uh, strategy. Um, maybe like help me think through this. What, why, why do you need to own each of the pieces uh, in that, and, and how does it sort of overall drive the, the podcasting uh, side of things? So maybe you should sort of start a, a super high level. If you think about where the podcast industry was when we started making these acquisitions and heavily investing in podcasts, I think the total ad revenue in the US for podcasts was around you know, 450 million. It's now grown around 40% annually a year to about 1.8 billion. Um, certainly, that's handsome growth. Yep. But then let me tell you about Spotify during this period. Spotify had around 10 million listeners to podcasts before we leaned in. Now we have 100 million. We now have 5 million podcasts on our platform. And our ad revenue grew last year 60% against the industry, which grew 26%. Both of them in a kind of not great ad market overall, but clearly podcasts and Spotify have excelled, and I would say Spotify has been a catalyst and a leader of this industry transformation. So with that being the backdrop, I think you can look at you know, content, monetization, and, and measurement as three components of how we got there. Yep. I think with content, um, we initially uh, invested in content, both through acquisitions and licenses, yep. to really bring consumption and drive MAU on our platform. We really scaled up the, the entire space by doing that. We also did a fantastic job at proving that we can create brands from creators. Both of this is important to both driving the future of the ad market, driving user satisfaction, and driving creator growth. Now, things are a little bit different. We've proven that we can do this. And so instead, we're looking at strategies where we can both advantage our platform with, with uh, window distribution and build monetization programs which allow for broad distribution for creators. Makes sense. I don't think you were here this morning, but, but we talked about sort of the constructs required in order to have a scaled advertising ecosystem, which starts with consumers and consumption, getting the content, uh, then moves into data and identity. Obviously, you guys have that. And next is the automation performance. So clearly sort of tying those all together. Uh, throughout the stack uh, aligns very well with, with, with just how we see the world and, and where the opportunity is. Um, want to shift to advertising, and maybe we'll start on the podcasting side of things, because uh, I'm not sure everyone in the broader digital space just understands how challenging the podcast advertising market is. Um, for one, it's been built on the RSS feed. You're sort of limited to very light data, very light sort of insertion capabilities. You guys, as you noted, have been a, a leader in this space, coming out with new things. I think uh, streaming ad insertion has been a, a huge part of that. Um, can you talk about the, the sort of innovation you guys have driven there and, and how you're thinking about that? We've certainly brought a lot of innovation in advertising, but I think innovation is just one component that we need to really continue to scale up audio and podcast advertising to its rightful place in the totality of ad budgets. So certainly in innovation, uh, we introduced streaming ad insertion. We launched Spotify Audience Network. We've recently launched call to action cards, which play in the now playing view. So all of those provide more reasons for advertisers to know that their ad spend is being effective and have them come back and spend on the platform. But that's just one component of what we need to do. Um, we also need to just keep reminding advertisers that this audience is huge and highly, highly engaged. Um, I mean, 
people are listening on Spotify for at least 2.4 hours a day. Well, I mean, that's exactly where I was going to go next. So the other slide we had up as you talked about audio is the massive amount of time spent in audio, broadly speaking, it's on Spotify, but, but also elsewhere that has this problem compared to the, the amount of ad spend. So I think it was 20% you know, of digital time spent is with audio, 3% of the advertising uh, market is there. Um, it doesn't seem like supply is the problem, right? Consumers are there. You guys have, I think, 300 million plus uh, ad supported users. Um, but demand may, what's demand missing, right? Why are, why are they not uh, clued into this, this opportunity? Well, I, I said the first point about understanding the audience. Yep. It's totally is right on. But also bring, giving them the tools to be able to buy effectively and get the audiences that they want, and then being able to measure them. We acquired Pod Sites last year, and we've done a lot of evolution with that product since we bought it. But we're still at the very beginning. I mean, we've just begun to experiment using Pod Sites with Omnicom to measure music consumption. So the more that we can like stretch the stretch the tools that we have and bring our advertisers along, I think the more we will be able to engender more spend. We are also investing a ton in just going out and getting more demand and making sure the advertisers know about us and why this is an effective buy. We've um, invested heavily in sales and support to really bolster our international markets. Remember, you know, if you think um, audio advertising is lagging in the US, look beyond the US. We really have a lot of room to run, but we just need to put the investment behind it. Got makes sense. And, uh yeah, I mean, look, we, the other major theme of today was first party data, right? And you guys obviously have a massive amount of that. Uh, this is an ecosystem that seems like it's sort of well suited for those platforms that have a lot of first party data. You mentioned the, the Spotify audience networks. You guys are clearly uh, leaning into that. I, I want to take a shift now. So the other very important part of Spotify and what you guys have focused on, it was the, the major theme of your stream event this year is creators. Uh, obviously, musicians are a backbone of it, but but so are the podcasters. And broadly speaking, they're all creators. You guys came out with a bunch of new tools around, you know, creating content, driving discovery, other forms of monetization. Can you talk about what new tools and formats you guys are are sort of doing to to support this creator economy? Sure, this sure. Um, for those who don't know, Stream On is our industry event. Uh, it was held in March, and it was really. Um, uh, an open showcase to creators and artists um, to welcome them to a new home at Spotify that's really focused on the success of creators and artists, both in driving audiences as well as monetization. So the biggest thing that we announced at Stream On was a completely new user experience um, on Spotify. And those of you who are Spotify users have probably now experienced some of these components. But what we have done is made Spotify a much more alive and interactive uh, platform so that there is a continuous visual feed of content. All of this is designed to drive more and more discovery. We've had amazing success with background discovery, but now we're going to drive foreground discovery. So that um, with uh, previews, both for music previews and podcast previews, clips, um, uh, other audio teasers to get people into new content. The more we can bring our users to try more content, the more that we will drive success for creators. Yeah, and another initiative in that, you mentioned clips, has been video, right? You guys seem to be leaning in heavily on video. Are consumers starting to, to use more video on Spotify? Obviously, podcasters are taking a more holistic approach to how they're doing it. It's audio, it's, it's video. Sometimes they use YouTube. I think sometimes they use you. How are you guys thinking about video in that, in that overall? Uh, Equation. So what we're saying early on in the platform, particularly in the podcast feed and the music feed off of home, is that the video feeds differentially drive description, uh, excuse me, discovery and you know, people linking through to consume the content and coming back again. So video is working. Yeah. So what we want to do is show creators that it makes sense to bring your video to Spotify because that's the way you're going to drive more audience. Obviously, there's also monetization opportunities associated with video for us yep. to exploit as well. Um, and what was the second part of your question? Uh, just overall, how you, yeah, you guys are leaning into it? Are, are people consuming it? Are people yep. you know, taking part of it? So it sounds like, it sounds like a it, resounding yes. A resounding uh, yes. Um, but let me give you another example of something we're, that we're doing. We are very interested in how we can work with creators to, um, to drive unique experiences on Spotify. 
And so, with some cases, we're working with um, some head creators like Markiplier, yep. where we have actually licensed exclusively their video on Spotify, but the podcast, audio podcast, is still distributed broadly in, auto, in audio. So, that's a way for us to have a unique experience for Spotify users specifically related to the video uh, engagement. Got it, makes sense. Uh, so the last topic, which you know, we're kind of almost ending every session with, you can't have a conversation in media <laughs> today without talking about this, uh, is AI. So uh, it seems like there's a ton of application into AI already. You know, Machine learning AI goes into creating songs, uh, discovery of songs. Uh, how are you guys seeing AI uh, start to play a role in the Spotify strategy? So AI is, it has been sort of a part of Spotify for, you know, for, for from the beginning, I mean, all of our playlists and music recommendations are based on AI. So what I think what we're really talking about now is the evolution of generative AI. And all eyes are on the creative industries, uh, especially music, on what the impact of generative AI will be. Um, there's definitely going to need to be a resolution around governance, where to draw the line, um, enforcement, and, and rewards around generative AI. I think Spotify has always really leaned into supporting creators, but also leaned into innovation. So I think we're particularly well placed to be part of this transformation and to actually support creators to get to the right place. Do you need to own your own generative AI? Is it going to be based out of Spotify, or are people going to be leveraging others? How, how do you think? Well, um, I'll give you an example of our, our first foray into generative AI is our DJ product. Um, I'm particularly proud of this product because it was built on the back of Synantic, which is an acquisition that my team did last year. I mentioned it a little bit earlier. Um, if you guys, um, if you're a Spotify user and you haven't played or experimented with your own personal DJ yet, please do. It's so much fun. The DJ knows what you want to listen to, has a specific song for a specific moment for you and you and you and you and you. It's all individualized. Um, but this has been uh, incredibly successful early days um, for the rollout. But so far, people are, who are listening are spending 25% of their listening time on DJ and 50% likely to come back the very next day. So we've only even rolled this out to a small fraction of English language so far. So we've got um, lots of excitement around where we can go with that. Yeah, very cool. It's a, I've seen the, the uh, product in use, and it just seems incredible for the, the amount of discovery you can get from it. OK, so last question here. We've got 30 seconds left. Uh, one of the things that you guys have, have done a really good job of engaging the, the community around is your unwrapped uh, thing you do at the end of the year. So. I think we both have to share what our unwrapped is. I have little kids, so my top song was actually uh, uh, Be Prepared from The Lion King, because my son has decided that Scar is somehow the coolest character in Lion King, which I, I don't quite understand. W what's the top song on your, on your list? My top song, I have to say, um, this is a little, I went through a real, like, disco phase last summer. Don't tell Terry that. There's a, there's a comedy video coming here. <laughs> um, it was Lady. There you go. Perfect. Sheila Spence, everyone, thank you so much.